to my latest video. This one's just a short guide on sort of solder flux and solder braid that I personally use because I get a lot of people asking me what sort of fluxes and uh, etc I use. And this is actually the one I really like. It's probably the best one I've ever found. It's called SMFL 200D. It comes in a 200 milliliter can. And when you get this flux, you get two nozzles, basically two caps that fit onto this orange nozzle. So you get one with a tiny hole in it that dispenses straight out of that hole. And the other one comes with a plastic straw that also, say, comes with the can. And as you can see, right over the left-hand side, I've got an old, this basically is an old contact lens case. So when the flux gets dispensed, it's actually really liquefied. So what, what you can do, you can spray it into say one side of this and leave it 20 minutes and it becomes more like a sticky flux. And some people like sort of a sticky flux rather than sort of really runny. So I actually sort of do both. So I'll dispense some 20 minutes before I'm sort of gonna work and then put some fresh stuff in the other side and you'll get both options in. Or you can also put some into the syringe like you see behind that. And just to say you've got an IC, you can just apply it with a syringe. And yeah, basically it's a really, really good flux. So it's the best one I've ever used. I'll sort of tell you along the way where I where you can get it if you need to get any on order. And I'll also put it in the description. So I'll do a few short videos and a few examples where I use these. Sort of general things like sort of solder shorts, sort of blocked holes, and sort of like like that. So um, yeah, there'll be a few short videos, a few photos as normal. And yeah, hopefully by the end of it, you'll sort of uh, you'll have learned a little bit about flux and braid. And uh, yeah, if you want to get any, hopefully you'll be able to use these places. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to crack straight on with the first video. I'm just going to show you how I clear sort of short circuits on an IC with the braid and the flux. And uh, yeah, I move on after that to a sort of other scenarios. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. All right, so come on to the first scenario. Basically, this one's where I've got about six or seven sort of shorted out IC pins as you can see sort of along the front there so basically I'm going to show you how I get rid of the uh, IC shorts and this is quite a common fault on PCBs so yeah it's a good one to know um, yeah you can basically do this without flux but probably like you sort of know from all my other videos I do like to sort of uh, use a little bit of flux to aid me and my favourite way of applying flux is I use the dip plastic tie wrap like in, you know like I showed you earlier I squirt it into the little pot dip my tie wrap in the way I go but you can do this with a syringe um, you know it's another good option but say the tie wraps the way I like to do it so what I do put a little bit on your iron always try and put a little bit on your iron don't sort of go in with a dry iron when you do this and just hold your sort of wick against it and this might take two visits because there's a lot of solder on there and that starts sort of going up the wick it's going to take a couple of visits this because there's such an amount on there so yeah, don't try and do it all in one if you've got a large amount. You might struggle. So yeah, just go back to it. So you've just got to be patient with some shorts. There's so much on this, it will take a few goes. But yeah, that's uh, that's not uncommon. I reckon this time should get started getting rid of it all, all in one. As you can see, it's now starting to go. Just got one more little short there that I'll get rid of. And then we can go back to uh, to revisit, do the joints properly. So yeah, make sure I've got all them shorts off. Let's gently go along it. Don't put too much pressure on the pads. So that's got rid of all the shorts. Now we've got to do, I normally just put a little bit of fresh flux on. Just along the joints. Now I can just, uh, yeah, go in with the iron and sort of redo them properly. So you can go in with a sort of an iron and try and get rid of solder if it's sort of a tiny amount. If you've got a large amount, you will sort of need braid. Yeah, you can just go in then, do them properly like they were, or they should have been originally. And yeah, there you go, you've got all nice joints along the front. Just give it a quick clean so you can sort of uh, get a general idea what it's going to look like. So that's why I do all my sort of IC shorts. Just, uh, yeah, any sort of, it's quite a common fault, so you will get this over the, over the time. And yeah, it's a good way of fixing it. So as you can see, I've got all nice joints right along the front. And uh, yeah, so it's looking like it should have originally. So yeah, that's how I do my shorts. And uh, yeah, that's the way, hopefully, it might help a few of you. So what I'll do now, I'm going to move on to the second video where I'm just going to sort of show you how I unblock through holes on boards and little vias, etc. So uh, yeah, we'll move on to that now. Right, so we're coming to the last video in this sort of first half of these short videos on the sort of braid and uh, 
and flux. So basically, this is quite a common scenario. I've got four blocked holes down here, and uh, yeah, the solder's going right away through to the other side. And this is saying you you will you sort of will encounter where you have to sort of unblock through holes and uh, etc. Little wires to put wires through and uh, yeah, things like that. So again, what I do, you can try this without flux, but like I say, I always sort of just use my flux to to aid it. And what you can do if you're struggling, you can sort of put a bit of flux on your solder braid. But another good tip that I do on this, a lot of people basically would put the, the sort of solder braid right at the end into the solder, into the blocked hole. But what I find, if you sort of allow an inch each way, hopefully in the video you can see the solder is going to spread along the braid. So it goes, you get basically twice the distance it can sort of wick off. And this one's going to, again, this is quite a thick board with a lot of solder in it. And this is basically what I find generally helps. If I put the braid sort of it, not right at the end, you get twice the distance covered. Or you can, basically, a lot of people might slide their braid along. Sort of like this. And that eventually will suck all that solder out. So as you can see, you've got a clear hole now. So yeah, I just find it a good sort of good tip to uh, allow the solder to travel both ways on the braid what I'm going to do on the next one I'm going to actually wick uh, sorry put a bit of flux on the braid and hope it's a job to sort of uh, appreciate you can see this but hopefully you'll sort of get the gist of, of what I'm trying to show that's nearly got that second hole clear I'll just clear this one then I'm going to actually put a bit of flux on the braid so that travels both ways on this wick, giving you twice the distance. There's just plenty of just burnt flux on there, so uh, I'll clean it all off at the end, you can see what it comes up like. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to add a little bit of flux onto my solder braid, and hopefully it will aid the wicking off motion. So what I've done, I've added a little bit of flux onto the braid, and hopefully you'll see that travelling quicker along the braid both directions you can slide your braid along and that's actually cleared that in one go so like I say if you're struggling put a little bit of flux on your braid and that will help really help it go along and uh, and clear your, clear your problem so we come to the last hole same again I put flux on the braid and hopefully this is going to travel along much easier like I say, it's probably a job to see it on the video, but all you do is slide your braid and you've got four clean holes, all totally clear of uh, mini solder. So I'm just going to give them a quick clean. So there you go. You've got four clear holes, all pads are fine. Holes are totally clear all the way through, just showing me the tweezers going through. So that's the way I clear my holes. So yeah, like I say, if you're struggling, put a bit of bit of flux on your braid and it really aid it. So what I do, I put a few photos up of these first videos and we move on to some more in the second half. So coming to the first video in the second half, I put a few more short videos in this half. This is basically where I've got a load of solder splashes on the board, as you can see, sort of quite large ones sort of dotted around. And this can also be the same scenario for solder balls, which yeah aren't too uncommon in uh, in the world of soldering. So the best thing to do, what you can do, some people might just go in with their iron and try and move this around, but it doesn't really pick the solder up very well. It, or just spreads from one area to another as you can see it's not really doing its job so what I do simple tip you don't even need solder braid for this all you need is flux basically if you just flux over so all the uh, all the excess solder if it's on some of the pads etc you will need sort of solder wick 
there to make sure every part's got a bit of, sort of flux on it. All you do then, just go around with it, and uh, yeah, your iron acts like a hoover. Basically, we'll just hoover up all that solder with no, with no problem. As you can see, it just gathers it up really quick. So if there's any on the pads, like on there, just get a little bit of braid after. Yeah, you can just literally hoover it up. Just You can see how it's just sticking to the iron, and it just comes off so easy. So I'll just give that a quick wipe. And uh, So if there's any on the pads, just give that a quick wipe over. There you go, you've got a perfectly clean board. If you've got any tiny little bits, say like in there, yeah, you just sort of suck them up after. But that's generally the way uh, way to pick up your excess solder and your solder balls. Try and do it with flux and it literally works like a hoover, just sucks it all up. So there, that's, uh, that's the first video in this half and uh, I'll move on to another one now. Right, so before we move on to this video, this base is where I'm going to remove some excess solder. As you can see on these two joints there, I've also got a short across that component. I'll tell you a little bit about the flux. So yeah, it's called SMFL200D. Uh, it's available from places like Farnell, RS Components. Uh, I've even seen it on eBay. You've got Rapid Online. But I'm sure, yeah, if you just Google that code, uh, you should be able to find it. It's fairly easy to find. And uh, I'll put, put a sort of a, a description uh, with this video there all the sort of places to get it be in that and um, yeah it's about 15 pound a can but it's it's really really good flux and like i say you can have it liquefied or you can make it more into a sticky flux if you leave it sort of 15 minutes and this is basically what i'm going to do here this i've actually got some flux here where i've sort of sprayed a bit earlier and this is where you can see that you can actually have it sort of more like a sticky flux so basically if you don't want the flux to run all around your components say if you want more of a sort of certain desired area just turn it into a sticky flux and uh, you know like I say it's, it's just really good if you want it trained in on a certain uh, certain spot so I haven't got it running all around the sides of everywhere so I've got it quite neat and so that's why this flux is very good it's, uh, it gives you the option of sort of two different ways so basically I've just trained it in on them joints. So now I can just, I've got a lot of solder on these so it might take a couple of times to get it wicked off. So you can see it's, that's got rid of some of it. It's actually, it's gonna take two or three goes to get this. Now I know some people use the solder sucker pumps, but I'm not a massive fan of them. But like I say, if you get on well with them, you know, that's uh, it's good. I always think it's good to have more than one option. So as you can see, I've sort of soldered them, or sort of wicked them down to a decent level. Just get rid of the short on that. Now I can just literally use the same sort of flux again, so it's like the sticky type flux. I'll just quickly touch these joints up. They're actually pretty good, they've got a decent amount on these joints without adding any more. So I can just reflow that around the back. Just touch them up. So let's give them all them joints, a, yeah, pretty good. Uh, they look pretty good now. So I say, it's, it's the flux that I've always used over the years. It's the one I really like. And uh, I will recommend you trying to get it. Because it really will aid your soldering. And the, the fluid I use is called Ultra Solver. And it's actually the partner for this flux. So it's got some of the flux off. And uh, some of the... Yeah, and as you can see, you've got four decent joints. The short's gone. So yeah, like I say... I'll put put the uh, the places to get it in the description sort of with this video, and yeah, hopefully it helps few you out. So what I'll do now, I'll move on to the next sort of uh, component, and uh, we'll take it from there. So moving on from the excess solder video, I'm just going to show you basically when you when I get gold pads like this, this is part of a sort of large transistor. Sometimes you don't you only get about a millimeter of uh, component. You can actually solder to it at the end, and what I find is people tend to get a blob of solder at the end along it. They don't actually get any flow underneath the, the body of the component. So what I do, I tend to pre-tin these pads, especially on the gold sort of uh, gold boards, because I find gold doesn't run quite as well. So yeah, I, I literally just sort of solder it all over, sort of thin, uh, sort of thin coat of solder. This is actually lead-free, so it's going to be probably a little bit sort of duller. And uh, you know what I do then, I'll add the flux, do a bit of flux, this is sort of the sticky fired flux where I've sort of left it a little while. And what I do with a braid, braid tends to come in a few different thicknesses. 
um, or a few different widths, sorry, but I don't really like the thick, the sort of really wide braid. I find it's a bit too tight, the strands are too tight, and it just, to me, it doesn't uh, act as well as the narrower braid. I just literally double it up. Just put the two layers next to each other. This is my braid, it's about one, just over a millimetre. And yeah, you can just uh, get a few different lengths and sort of, yeah, just double it up. And it just does, I find, a far better job. It actually sort of, uh, I find it's just so much more manageable than the wide stuff. And what I do, just clean that off and you'll see I've got a nice tin pad. So that way, when I, I know when I put this component on, I'm going to get a lovely flow right underneath. So basically, that's that's the sort of main topic for sort of doing this one, is to sort of say about the different whips. And uh, yeah, I find, get the narrower stuff and just double it up. And uh, yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap this video up now, but there's a couple of quick points to just quickly say. If you get a short at the back of an IC, or back of two legs, you know, short between them, and you're struggling to wick it out, you tend to have to attach a new bit of solder to try and sort of join that old, that short that's underneath. So uh, you might struggle otherwise, but yeah, so it's the same with a hole. If you've got a sort of blocked barrel and the solder's sort of halfway down a hole, try and add a bit of fresh solder to sort of make contact with the old stuff and uh, that'll give you a good chance in a wicking out the hole. Anyway, so yeah, I'd like to thank you all for sort of watching the video and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it and hopefully you've learned something from it. What I do, I put a few more pictures up like I always do and uh, I'll see you again soon with another video. So thanks a lot for watching.